hours of March 24, 2014, police responded to a shooting at a residence in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Little did they know they were walking into the home of someone so obsessed with zombies that they not only believed they were real, but he and his son were actually preparing for the zombie apocalypse. What police found inside the house was more horrific and bizarre than they could have ever imagined. Blood trail along this hallway leads into this room. There's a lot of weird people. Okay. That mug says this is my zombie killing mug. Do you believe in the zombie apocalypse? Do you believe that's going to happen? Probably. Probably. When police arrived at the house, they discovered that the 911 call reporting the shooting had been placed by the 14 year old. They found him waiting outside. Look at your phone. Got some blood on him right there. Can we figure out what's going on, bud? Okay. Nope. As police will soon find out, the story about how he came to be covered in blood is even more twisted than they ever could have imagined. For everyone's safety, deputies still need to secure the house and verify if there's anyone else inside the home. What they discover is nothing short of haunting. The following footage has never been seen before. I've got blood footprints on the ground in there. But before you go in, just a minute. Coordinate police, come out with your hands up! I got sight in the kitchen. Clear all the way to the window. He said the gun's on the counter, it's right there, on the left. Okay, you guys. Copy. Can't see through this window. Copy, I'm going behind you. Somebody back there, maybe? Yep. Some. Okay. I'll hold this on the right if you go through the left. Portland police, come out with your hands up. Small room. I'm clear. Clear. I'm going to pull this blanket. You guys get a visual on this guy, okay? Show me your hands. <laughs> Got it. Got one male. Looks deceased. This is the second one. Second. He's juvenile. Okay. Appears to be deceased as well. I'm going to pie in. Okay, got it. I don't see anybody in the bathroom. There's still a shower back there. Okay. okay I'm going to go through and clear. Away. I can go in through and clear if you want. I'm going to go through and clear the bathroom. Okay, go ahead. Bathroom's clear. And leg. I got a door here, I'm gonna check. Court lane, please, come out with your hands up. Small room clear. Absolutely. I'm gonna check for pulse in the dad. Okay, go ahead. Still warm. I can't feel it. Yep. Yeah, checking wrist. I can't tell if it's my heart racing or his. Yeah. I'll give you one medical guy from Texas. Come bring him in. Bring him in. Okay. I got a slight, slight pulse. I can't tell if it's mine or his. Are you sure? No, I can't tell if it's my heart racing or his. It's slight though, whatever it is. You okay back there? Hmm? You okay? Me? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. The cuff on my hand kind of hurts a little. Okay. You try and scoot your butt forward just a little bit and get your hands a little bit more room. It appears that there's no one else in the house, save for not one, but two bodies they find in one of the bedrooms. Both are deceased, and it becomes apparent rather quickly that what happened here is much more complicated than a shooting. 
A variety of weapons are found strewn about the house, and blood snakes its way through the hallway, the living room, bathroom, and bedrooms. Looks like he shot his dad and his brother with a machete. Even more disturbing, the juvenile found dead looks to have been the target of a large machete found on the kitchen floor. Outside, deputies prepare to take the surviving boy for questioning. We're going to go right this way, pal. Okay? I don't know if he's been searched or anything, so... Okay. Just face the dial 911 there, spread your feet. Before we put him in, I want to take photos of him. Yep. Just stay there, bud. What's this in your pocket? Keys. Keys to what? Locker at school. The locker at school? And my locker to my school. You said your name's El Elvin? Elvin. Elvin with an E? Right yeah. Okay. <laughs> I want to grab my camera. Go and open your hands for me. Is there any final takeaways? Yeah, there was. Let's go ahead and uh, switch out his cuffs. You want to go behind the car right there? That'll block us. Well, I'm going to switch out his cuffs. Just stay where you are. Did I tell you to move? This one, you're going to take off the cuffs? I didn't tell you to move, though. Okay, I'll tell you to do something before you do it, all right? Elvin, I want you to look at that dial 911. Quit moving around. Stop moving. Elvin, stop moving. Do you understand what I mean by stop moving? Okay, stop moving. <clears throat> okay, Elvin, we're going to get in the back of this. Okay, go ahead, turn around. Sit, slide in. It's good enough. All right, I'll meet you over there. The crime scene has piqued the interest of passersby and neighbors, who police start to gather information from. So explain to me the circumstances of this being a St. Vincent's home. Is this like a halfway house I'm or? The okay, so what's going on? This there? is an emergency shelter for families. Emergency shelter, okay. Yeah, we just reopened it. He was renting it. And who's he? Alden Samuels. Okay. He's the father. And how many kids did he have in the home? Two. Okay. Do you know their names? Yes, Jonathan. And Eldon. Um, his, that would... his one son is autistic. Which one's that? Um, Jonathan. Jonathan's autistic. The boy, now in the back of the police cruiser, is Eldon Samuel III. The two dead males inside are his father, Eldon Samuel Jr., who we will refer to as Jr., and Eldon's younger brother, Jonathan Samuel. The family moved to Coeur d'Alene from California the summer prior and lived in the emergency shelter home. <laughs> Hey, Eldon? Yeah? Is anybody in that trailer? No, not the... No? Probably not. Your dad was in there earlier. Do you know what he was doing? No. No? No, I don't really think there's anybody in there. How come the heater's on in there? The heater's not in there? Uh -huh. In the trailer? Uh-huh. Someone's probably in there. All right, stay put until I tell you to step out. That's it. That's such a rush. What's that? What's this? Just a rush. How old's your brother? I don't know. He doesn't know. Thir Thirteen, it sounds like, from Wilhelm. Though Eldon is apparently unsure, his younger brother Jonathan is, in fact, 13. All right, just stand right here for a minute. Your, your last name Samuels? Mm -hmm. Last name is Samuels? Yeah. I'm thinking of changing. So. Yeah. yeah. What's your middle name? Uh, Gail. Gail? Yeah. G A. G A B A. What's your name? Cohen. Cohen. It's cool, man. Thanks. How old are you? Okay. Detectives photograph Eldon and take his blood stained clothes for evidence. You feel doing all right? Yeah, I'm just a bit nervous. Nervous? Yeah. What are you nervous about? Because the cops are here? No. Okay. We can talk about that with all day. Eldon is questioned about the incident that has just occurred in this never-before-seen interrogation footage. The following footage has been analyzed by a qualified team, including a licensed professional counselor and a licensed attorney. Yeah, Eldon, just, just relax. I'm just here to talk to you a little bit, okay? So you can take a breath. Like, like what I do if I have to adjust my leg or take a breath, that's okay. You don't live far from the school, do you? Because I've seen you at school. Do you remember talking to me at school? <laughs> what did we talk about? Handcuffs. The handcuffs, that's right. What did we decide about the handcuffs? The handcuffs. 
After the detectives make Eldon comfortable, they begin their interview, starting with how he ended up shooting his father. He says, having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us right now? Do you want to talk to me and my boss about what's going on tonight? Right now? Yeah, that's why we're here. Do you want to talk? I'm like, well, like, where will it stay? Just right here, we'll just chat right here. No, we're just in the chat in this room. No, we're not going to keep you alive. We'll just chat right now. So this is just, because you have, you have the right to talk to me. Like I said, I have the right to talk to you. So this is just saying, having these rights of mine, do you want to talk to me right now? Right now? Yeah. Like how much time would it take? It won't take long. 30 minutes to an hour tops is what I imagine. Yeah, I got stuff to do. So, do you want to chat? Sure. Okay. The officer establishes that he and Eldon already know each other. He may have been brought into the interrogation specifically for this reason, as Eldon may feel more comfortable having someone he knows in the room. However, if they have a trusting relationship beforehand, then the suspect may not really understand the adversarial nature of police questioning. You'll notice that the officer he knows is leaned into his personal space, but only while discussing Eldon's rights and his willingness to speak with officers. Invading someone's personal space is a common tactic in police interrogations, as it puts pressure on the other person. In the state of Idaho, police are generally free to interrogate minors without any limitations, beyond constitutional provisions that would equally apply to adults in a similar situation. The minor does not have to have someone present to represent their interests prior to questioning until and unless the minor specifically makes a request for counsel or the presence of a parent or guardian. In that case, an interrogation would have to stop upon the request. However, there are a number of differences for a minor brought into the juvenile system. For example, before a minor may admit to an allegation in court, the presiding judge will have to make a determination as to whether or not the admission is allowed at all. So do you know why you're in the interview room with us today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Why is that? You murdered him. Okay. So explain to me what happened. What do you mean by that? My dad? He was on his medication. Okay. Yeah. He needs some dudes to do the thing. So, he's done it before. He's not mad at me being here. Remember? I wanted to do something, but I couldn't. He just beat me. Next time, he did that. He was outside. He was shooting guns out there. Thinking there were zombies in them. And told me to go back inside. This was your dad? Yeah. Then you told him to go back inside? Okay. Yeah. As Eldon begins his story about his dad shooting at zombies outside, he rubs his forehead and engages in more eye blocking, all which are anxiety responses. However, when he gets to the part of the story about being told to go back inside, he makes very intense eye contact, which is a shift in his behavior so far. He may be watching the officer's reactions to his story closely to see if they're believing him. He went back at time because he thinks there was not the apocalypse. He told her if it wasn't. Okay. He told me to get out. To get out. He told me to get out. And... He repeats, he told me to get out three times, which may be him trying to solidify that part of the story. So, I didn't know. My dad said, what? He just, he just started walking towards me. He hit me. He hit me and had the gun out. Before he found Okay. He hit me again. That shot. So you, who had the 45? Me. You had it? Where did you get it? It's my dad's. It's your dad's. Where does he keep it? On his couch, he had it out. Okay. Did you usually hold it? Yeah. Let's just back up this a little bit, then we'll get some more details. When your dad hit you, as you were arguing, you said he took medications or you did? Yeah. You said he took, he took medications? Eldon is drinking a lot of water here, along with sniffing and fidgeting. It's safe to say he is highly anxious. The fight-or-flight response can lead to dry mouth and an engorgement of the nose, which causes itchiness and the need for more oxygen. This would explain the frequent sniffing. 
All of this is a red flag for markedly heightened anxiety. While he should be a bit anxious in the police station, he and one of the officers seem to already have a rapport, so the fact that his anxiety is this high is likely throwing off serious red flags for the interrogators. And he hit you because he's hit you before? Is that what you said? Huh? He's hit you before? He's hit me before? Hit? He strike you? He hit me before? Okay. Was that tonight? Yeah. The first time he says he's hit me before seems to be a question to clarify what the officer is saying but the second still seems to have an upward inflection in his tone, which can indicate uncertainty about this allegation of his dad hitting him before. Eldon has also been trying to take time to think about his answer. It's unlikely he didn't actually hear the officer. He's just getting him to repeat questions, so he has time to think about the right answer. How did he hit you? He just hit me once hard with an open hand, close fist, his fist, close fist, where did he hit you? Like, no, you can show me, want to show me? It was dark, so I, I can remember. I know, but where did you feel it? I don't know, somewhere around right here. On your left side? Yeah, but it was dark. Okay. Eldon seems to be struggling to find where his dad hit him. Claiming he hit him hard makes it sound as though it may have left a bruise or soreness, but he's basically pointing to all of his left upper body. This is another red flag. A truthful individual would have an accurate place to point to. He's also been engaging in a lot of lip compression movements, which once again indicates he's feeling stressed and nervous. He doesn't seem to have thought this story through at all. This isn't surprising since he's a very young adolescent. However, it's also noteworthy that Eldon isn't as intimidated as most children would be in this situation. Lying to two detectives in an interrogation room is certainly a bold move. This demonstrates that Eldon may not fear authority like the typical kid would. One of the features of children and teens with serious behavioral issues is a lack of respect for authority. And he straightened me to my room, and I had to cut him. And he hit me again, and I just pulled the trigger. And did he say anything? He said, well, saying, you killed me, so, okay. So you pulled the trigger? Yes. Yeah. And you got the gun? Yeah. Okay, how many times did you pull the trigger? Once, that one time. Okay. I just shot three times. I had it. Three times? Yeah. And what happened? Uh -huh. It's all right. We're doing good. I know it's a tough deal to talk about. Eldon's claim that his father was outside shooting seems to be corroborated by neighbors who heard a gunshot earlier in the evening. That isn't all they had to say, either. Some of the neighbors had a few interesting things to say about the strange family next door. Did you hear something? A gunshot earlier, sound like, maybe. Okay, just one? One, single round. About how long ago? Hour ago, hour and a half ago. There's a lot of weird people. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, and I, they I, just I, moved I, here, my understanding? They've been here six, five months, maybe? Four months? How long have they been, how long they been here? Good night. I was say six okay. months. I've had my suspicions that there's been drugs coming out of there. Okay. I made complaints. I, uh, I saw him stand out here today for about 40 minutes, had a conversation with one of the gentlemen in here. Okay. Looked completely coherent. I see I've never spoke a word to the guy. Kind of weird, but he, he okay. keeps to himself, but he doesn't. I mean, like I said, I have my suspicions there's been okay. something going on. Right. To that extent. When we came home, we just got out of the truck, didn't see. I mean, I don't remember seeing. He okay. came out, he was messing with the. Around. That's right. Who, who was? The, the older gentleman. The, the, the dad. dad. The, and uh, he did dad. come out and mess with the camper, too. About okay. when do you think? How long before you, before? We got about like, six. Oh, well, yeah. And he's kind of pacing around out there. I was just going to watch him. And then I saw him. Comment, like, gosh, he just. He's just strange. weird. Because you, you, you waved him. Like I said, he's never said a word to me. But you waved him. And he'll just stare at you. Yeah. What do you, I mean, it's, it's just always something. There's fights or drugs. There's I've been watching that guy do. I, I'm pretty sure he's been dealing something out of there for a while. I watch this guy coming out of his house every day. I, I work from home a lot today. I work from home all day with this window open. Right. I saw him have a. You know, he's he's a kind of a weird guy. Um, just stay, he, he he's kind of creepy. He doesn't ever said a word to us in six months he's lived here. He, I wave. He doesn't wave. He just stares straight forward at he me. Just, he just he's chain smokes like you would never believe. So right. It's like every five minutes he's on his deck, and he just stares, just stares, or squats and just stares at you, and it's like you feel uncomfortable, like you're in a fishbowl. 
So what, what's the deal with dad? I mean, you mentioned uh, coming out. I mean, he's medical calls or something. Yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't know what happens, but when he first moved in about, and he's been here about six months, um, the first couple months, it just seemed like every couple weeks, there was a handful of ambulances and cops out here, and they were bringing somebody out on a stretcher, you know? And like he was, you know, maybe he was sick or something, but it was, but it was just, and then it became often. And I don't know if there was, like I said, I don't know if there was fighting going on, mm-hmm. some, whatever those reasons were. And I'm not even positive 100% if it was the dad every time. It might have been that older son or it might have been the younger one. Notably, he uses the phrase, like I said, frequently. This is something called a referral statement, which is often used to bolster a statement. Though it's usually associated with someone lying, it doesn't necessarily mean that he's lying here and instead could be an indication of how uncomfortable or upset he may be by the situation, which would be understandable. If you think of anything, don't hesitate to call. Leave me a message. I'll get right back with you. Sounds good. So... Any idea? <laughs> I, I don't want my kids to see this. You know, in the morning, she's freaked out really bad. Okay. If, I don't want my kids to see this. If, if there was uh, life-saving efforts that needed to happen, it would have happened immediately. If, oh, there's so, if there's something else going on, we have to wait. We want to make sure we do, do it right, so we will be here through the night. Back in the interrogation room, Eldon explains what happened next after he shot his father. He was crawling. He's crawling to John. To who? To John Fitzgerald. Right. Yeah. Your brother's John? Is it John or Jonathan? John. You call him John now? John. Jonathan. So go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm going to call him John sometime. Okay. But he's going to us, John. It's messed up. So where was John or Jonathan? He was under the bed. Who's better? Who's the bedroom? John's bedroom. So he has his own bedroom? And he was under the bed? Yeah. Okay. How do you know he was under the bed? He went in there to John to get out. He wouldn't get out. Yeah. Yeah. Interestingly, Eldon is rubbing the back of his neck here, which may be an unconscious attempt to bring down his heart rate, as rubbing the vagus nerve can slow an anxious heartbeat. Why do you want to make a room? Dad was there. He was, just, he was like right there. I just wanted him out. Then when I have a, and I tried, I started baking apart the cushions, the other mattress. She took him a lot, tried to grab him out. Like with your hands? Yeah. Okay. And what did he say to him? I just wanted to get out of there. Okay. And what did he do? He just didn't want to go. And then what happened? That's all right. You're doing good. What happened after that? Can you really remember? So he's not, he's about your size. I mean, he's not too small. And I know that he doesn't like, um, he's got some issues with space, some spatial issues. I know that he doesn't take me a while for him to like me and talk to me, so I was good with him. So I'm sure if he was upset or if you're yelling at him, I can see how he might act, but I don't know how he acted tonight, so I need you to tell me. The detectives propose an alternative theory here in the hopes that Eldon will admit to something, especially if they make it seem more acceptable. They seem to be saying that his brother may have acted out, which would give Eldon some kind of excuse for what he did. Eldon knows he can claim his dad abused him as an excuse, but explaining viciously murdering his brother is another story entirely. So you told him to get out? Yeah. I told him to get out. Same. So your dad still problem for him? Yeah. Okay. That was before I shot him through the head. So he started crawling, told him to get out. He was holding the shotgun. Who was? Dad. Okay. And he, he had it loaded and everything. And he just started pointing at John. Just trying to shot him. So who shot? Your dad shot John? Yeah. He did? With the shotgun? Yeah. Okay. How many times? I'm going to just turn, like, two times a turn. You start two times? Yeah, okay. 
Eldon has sounded a bit unsure throughout the interview so far, but here he sounds even more uncertain, and there's an upward inflection in his voice. As he goes to show two fingers, he can't quite get his body to cooperate, and it's a weak hand motion. He immediately returns back to self-soothing rubbing on his leg above his knee. Okay, what do you need? What is it? To you, what does it sound like? You said you heard. It's like a boom, a pop, a... Okay. Then I heard that again. Did you see it? No. And you were all in John's room? Okay. And I'm sorry, man. It's that sometimes I'm a little slow, so I'm just kind of losing track of where everybody was. And so you're dead. You said that you shot him in the stomach when you had him. Then he crawled away. Okay, then he crawled away. Once again, Eldon covers his mouth after saying he crawled away. This part may not be a lie necessarily, but there could be something he's intentionally leaving out in this part of the story. Then he crawled up to, to John's, John's room. Okay, so now I'm track with you. So if you don't mind, pick up from right there. So your dad was shot in the belly, and he crawled up to John's bedroom. And where are you? I, I was going to go in here. But where are you? Where, where in the house? Because I'm not familiar with your house. I was just standing there. Where? Like, standing in the living room. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That's why I was missing. I didn't know. You know what? If I'm not there, I'm not sure who's where. And so, so your dad's crawling? Yeah. And he's yeah. standing, just watching him. Yeah. Like, what do I do? What do I do? I don't know what to do. Sure, it sounds like you paused. Like, shut up. Okay. So when your dad was crawling to John, did he have the shotgun? Yeah. Where did he get the shotgun? He's wearing a mask. He tried, he tried to shoot me, but he's stuck. So he just pulled the trigger. And he, he shot John in the leg. Okay. Did you see that? No. No. While rubbing his head, Eldon has started doing something odd with his feet. He brings his foot forward and tucks the toes under while clenching them. It's almost like his feet are taking the place of his hands for anxiety displays, since he seems to be working at not using his hands too much. We don't get to see this often since most people's feet are usually covered, but feet can still indicate how people feel. We learn to lie with our words, and to a certain extent with our face and hands as we're growing up. These are the tells we're used to looking for, but most people never focus on the feet. Additionally, it would be extremely difficult to concentrate on the right words, facial expressions, hand movements, and feet movements. That's just a huge cognitive load on an individual. How do you know John shot in the leg? Because he yelled out my leg. Okay. And so I went outside so I couldn't hear it. I could still hear the screaming. John or your dad? John. Okay. How do you know it was John? Because daddy stopped talking. Okay. And dad, my dad kind of started stabbing him and stuff. John? Uh-huh. I can't remember. That's all right. It's better that instead of trying to think what happened or making something up, it's always better to be honest. And that goes for you and me both. And so if you don't remember, it's okay to say I don't remember. And we can work with that. We'll talk to you, we'll talk to you through it. And so if you don't remember, you don't remember. You know what I mean? But at the same time, <clears throat> if you do remember, you need to tell us that. Okay? And, and I understand you just went through something pretty difficult okay i get that but at the same time it just happened okay so i'm i'm hopeful that you'll remember exactly what happened um so we have a better understanding of of what occurred what led up to this things like that okay so because right now you're you're saying some things and i i kind of understand but it feels like there's some pieces missing. Follow me? Okay. So let's make sure we fill in those blanks. So I think you said you went outside so you didn't have to hear anymore? Yeah. What did you want to hear? 
all of it. I don't hear all of it. I don't hear gunshots. I don't want to hear your brother screaming. Okay, so at what point do you go back inside the house? I just walked in. After sounds went off. I walked inside the house. That curtain, I just clipped it. My brother. Yeah, true. Your dad killed your brother? Yeah. You just with that shotgun? Oh, yeah. I shot him. Full shitting. So, he had a lot of pipes and stuff on him. And your dad did this even though he was shot? Yeah, he was shot. Probably thought it was me, that John. Probably thought John shot him because he was on that medication. I don't know what happened. What did you see your dad do to Jonathan exactly with that machete? You, what you saw? I didn't see, he was just, he was just holding it. And I just took it and threw it. Threw it. Was Jonathan still alive when you took the machete from your dad? I didn't know. I just saw what he did. <clears throat> was he making noise? No. John wasn't moving. Okay. Took the machete from him. Threw it away. I got the 45. And he said that. He was gonna kill me. So I shot him. Eldon doesn't quite seem to grasp the gravity of the situation and makes some interesting requests. Whether this is done in pure naivety or because of something darker remains to be seen. So where am I gonna live? We'll work on that, okay? Just hang tight. Let's get you some water. We'll work on it. That's a great question, though, all right? Can I go back to my house and get my stuff? We'll, we'll work on some other things, okay? We'll just chat for a little while. Hmm. <laughs> what do you need from your house? You sound like me now. Your Xbox. Your Xbox GTA 5. And probably your club, now that I mentioned it, huh? Yeah, that's my bad. What GTA 5 was that? The GTA 5? It's a great fun from a video game. It's a little by your mom. Where's your mom? California. She's in California right now? Yeah. Okay. That's just the theater. Yeah? Um, it's probably your mom's theater. I can get a hold of her. Yeah. We'll make sure that we get a hold of your mom, though. What do you think she's going to say about what happened tonight? Eldon's mother, Tina, still lives in California. She and Junior separated after a tumultuous marriage marred by financial hardship, drug use, and alleged... My mom said that he did bad things to her. Who did? Dad. Yeah, I did. What kind of bad things did he do to her? Like, did you just hear things or do you know things? In addition to more mouth covering and facial rubbing here, he's got his foot up in a barrier position now, blocking both the detectives. Well, my dad was driving fast. Mom wanted to get out, so she, she opened the door, and my dad ran her over. Oh, man. Yeah. So, it doesn't sound good for anybody. So she had to go to the hospital, and it's horrible. It's all right. It's one of those things. So there's a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. This is an indication that Eldon may have held an immense grudge against his father for what his father allegedly did to his mother. Eldon began crying for what seemed like the first time in the interrogation when mentioning wanting to see his mother. Eldon would later tell a psychiatrist that he witnessed alleged abuse perpetrated by his father against his mother. He claims that on one occasion, Junior poured lighter fluid on his wife and threatened to light her on fire. In another instance, Eldon stated that Junior bound her with duct tape and held a gun to her head before forcing Eldon to urinate on her. Anthony, Eldon's oldest brother and Junior's son from a previous marriage, said that he knew his father could be violent when he was on drugs, but that he'd never abused him or his sisters. He claimed that his father had recently kicked the drug habit and moved to Idaho to get his life back on track, and be a better father to his two younger brothers. 
Anthony, as well as his grandfather, Eldon Sr., alleged that Tina was the aggressor, not Junior. In 2012, Tina pleaded no contest to a charge of willful child cruelty and spent six months in a Stanislaus County jail. It's not clear whether or not the child in question was Eldon. At various points in their marriage, Tina and Junior both filed restraining orders against the other for domestic violence. Did you see any anger issues with her? Well, I used to, yeah. What do you mean, used to? Well, when she was little, she used to just desire to pull down stuff and get really, really angry. Eldon Sr. crosses his arms here, which is likely a dislike response due to having to talk about his son's negative qualities. When was that? Oh, years ago, and uh, actually with Tina, because they lived on the beach in Modesto, and I, I, I helped him by a window and sliding glass door. Then when he moved over on the east side of Modesto, and I helped him replace two sliding glass doors. Why is that? Because he said he couldn't afford it. No, but how did they get broken? Tina threw a lamp the first time through the door, and the second time she tried to push a chair through the door. And he didn't do these, but you're thinking Tina did it? He told me Tina did it. So I didn't believe him? Well, yeah, in a way, because she's a messed up lady. But your son isn't? Well, I'm thinking now, yeah, maybe so. You're you know? thinking maybe not. Yeah. It's interesting here that he does a big hands up response. At this point, he still believes that his son isn't responsible, though it looks like the officer introduces some doubt. Parents often want to believe the best about their children. They rarely want to admit their children might be the messed up one or part of the problem. It's much easier to blame others, but after what has occurred, he now has to figure out why his grandson would do this. It's probably causing a lot of cognitive dissonance for him. The more he has to think about it, the less certain he's likely to become. Yeah. So you don't know for sure. You just did what he told you, right? What he told me, I know, because I'm not, you know, that's their life. No. So did you see him get angry with the kids? Well, not in that way, no. I need your total honesty on this. No. I know you do. Why are we smiling? <laughs> well, I'm just, I don't want maybe to talk about this. I, uh, I'm trying to think of, of the time he did lose his temper. He appears really uncomfortable here and states, not that way, no. He's probably questioning himself about what signs he missed. Notice that he shifts into a barrier position shortly afterwards as well. He's uncomfortable with having to face these facts because it doesn't fit with the picture he wants to have of his son. Well, he never hit those kids in front of me. He didn't? No, but he would yell at them. What would he yell? How would he yell at them? It's a real high voice type of voice. Would he ever uh, cuss at him? No, he didn't in front of me, but he might have went to provide themselves. Okay, so did you ever see him uh, he knows I don't use physical um, well, on the ground and stuff? And he not well, anything? No, not in front of me. Uh, and that's not to say it wouldn't happen when nobody else was around. Okay. It's to say that I never seen it. No. Okay. And what would he yell at um, Johnny? No, mm, yeah, he would yell at the other one. Help. Despite the contrasting statements made by family members, a pediatrician would later testify to the neglect that Eldon and his brother faced while living with their father. Eldon specifically was malnourished, had severe dental issues, and had many absences at school. Junior's alleged behavior was exacerbated by his prescription drug addiction. There were a number of medications collected from the house the night of the incident. Junior was prescribed several drugs for anxiety, sleep, and due to a workplace injury a few years before his death, muscle relaxers and opiates. Junior's autopsy showed a plethora of medications in his system, most notably large amounts of the sleep medication Ambien. According to Eldon, the medications also had a strange side effect. And detectives returned to something Eldon said earlier in his interview that struck them as odd. Why do you know he was all upset, paranoid about zombies if he didn't say anything? He is on his medication. Okay. 
So, but he didn't say anything about zombies. You just attribute him taking that medication as to as to that's what he thinks. No, huh? it, it was just that was. Did he say anything about zombies tonight? Yeah. What did he say? He said that there might be zombies outside and stuff. So, did you believe him? No. Do you think and I'm not trying to talk down to you, but do you think there's zombies outside? You don't think so? Probably not. Alright. Do you know what they are? Yeah. Okay. Do you believe in the zombie apocalypse? Do you believe that's going to happen? Probably. Probably? Yeah, what's going down with the Ukraine stuff? Eldon has his body in an interesting position here, sitting cross-legged with his arms barriered. It seems this line of questioning has him concerned and feeling defensive. Do you talk to your dad about this type of stuff a lot? No, probably just keep going to myself. Okay. Well, it sounds like you and Dad had that in common, though, that you guys believe in the zombie apocalypse, and he's all like, wanting to prepare, but... Oh, like doomsday stuff? Like yeah. something bad's going to happen? Yeah. What did he do to prepare? He just prepared, bought that trailer, and all this other stuff, buying guns. Oh, the crappy brown trailer? Yeah. Tina Samuel tells detectives that her ex-husband was a survivalist that began training their sons for the inevitable zombie apocalypse. Another thing that Eldon's older brother rejects. Regardless, the cache of weapons, a new trailer on the property, and zombie paraphernalia mixed with the cocktail of medications in Junior's system certainly lent some credibility to Eldon's story. But there's still something fishy about Eldon's version of events and detectives backtracked what happened inside the house after he shot his father. But how do you know? If you were in Jonathan's room, how do you know he was in the room? What do you mean? You and Jonathan? Yeah. He's always in his bed. Right. How do, you, how do you know that your dad was in Jonathan's room? I've been crawling there. So were you in your doorway? Yeah, I was in my doorway. And there's that little blanket. That's, that's, good. Good. that's all I need to know. I didn't, I didn't know that. So then what did you do? I don't know where this stopped. Who did? Me. You stopped? I stopped. Right by the curtain or this side of it? I just stopped. I just didn't know what to do. So you kind of froze? Yeah. Did you say anything to yourself? You know, sometimes we talk to ourselves. Say, we don't say it, but inside we say, man, I shouldn't have done this on earth. Crap or something like that. What did you What did you do? I didn't do anything. I just I didn't know what to do. He just went in there. I tried to get John out. Just move the cushions. Okay. And he wouldn't come out. No. Because he's always afraid of me. Yeah. Because you guys, you guys have issues, and he has he has a condition, so I'm aware of that. He's afraid of me. So I tried to get him out. The cushions that couldn't hold him anymore. The mattress? Yeah. Okay. So what, how are you holding up the mattress? Show me. Oh, like that. Okay, like that? Yeah. Okay. And then you're trying to reach for him? I was trying to, I didn't have the plate. Show him, come on. Okay. And what did he do? He backed up. He just didn't come on. Okay. I just let the mattress go. Just fine. Then what? The mattress was stuck on the, it's on the wall. Okay. And I had to, I was going to kill you. And just ran, just ran outside, covering my ears. So when you're outside, what happened? I just threw a lot of gunshots. Shotgun. Shot. Oh. And so if I go to the house, am I going to find a shotgun? And if I look at your little brother, am I going to find shotgun shots? Shotgun shots? Yeah. yeah. Where am I going to find those? Where? Dad's in. Where is that? Eldon repeated, he was right outside, which is once again his attempt to solidify his story. Then he repeats the question, shotgun shots, while looking up to make eye contact with the officer to see if he was believed. Repeating the questions and his statements are all delaying techniques. So is taking a drink in order to give himself more time to think. 
At what point did you come back and shoot your brother? Huh? At what point did you come back and shoot your brother? Shoot my brother? Yeah. Shoot my brother? Yeah. The interrogator may be trying to catch him off guard here. He's trying to see if because they've been talking casually, if he would speak without thinking. He just casually slides it in there like it's no big deal, or like Eldon had already admitted it, likely hoping that Eldon might not remember what he said earlier. Eldon does do some repeating of the question here, but also doesn't get angry about the officer saying he shot his brother, which of course we know an innocent person would most likely get pretty upset at this insinuation. Eldon gives himself away a bit here. Shoot me, brother. I can't. I thought you said your dad stabbed. Yeah, he did. He had the shotgun. And he shot my brother. And he either, he either had a shotgun, had a pistol, or had a machete. He did all three. There's no way. I gave my brother a phone. Gave him a phone. That for my dad. But you were outside. I was in the middle of the story. Okay. Well, I was trying to move up the cushions, okay? And just shake. Like right there, where my dad's dragging all that stuff. I tried to grab it with my feet. And just I gave it to him. Fear your dad to my brother. All right. But you said you let the mattresses go and you couldn't hold them anymore. Yeah, it's when I let them go. And let them go and then did that. And I just fell off from the just Here, John. All right. I just left the house after that. Detectives know Eldon is hiding something, and they're about to turn up the heat. All right. I just left the house after that. Okay, let's do this. Let's wait. You've been really helpful, and you've been honest about, we talked about everything we talked about, the silly handcuffs, Dotto, your house, the terrible things that happened at your house that night. We talked about that. And for the most part, um, I think you're being honest, and, and you're the only one that knows you were there. Correct. There is no way that your, da your dad drove a shotgun and, and had a machete with him, and then you had a pistol. There's no way that all that happened. What really happened with your brother? Just tell me. What do you mean? I'm going to listen. Listen. Pistol? I don't know what the millimeter is. We're going to listen. We're, we're super good in our jobs, okay? We're good at gathering evidence, putting pieces together like a puzzle. That's why they call them detectives. They detect things. But we're going to figure it all out. How did your brother get shot? Not some story about a shotgun and a hatchet and all that other crap. The real story um, with your brother, what happened? Yeah, just tell me. You're going to feel better when you tell me. I don't want to hear you. It, it doesn't make any sense to be perfectly honest and detailed about a certain thing and then kind of, well, your dad, and he had a machete and a shotgun, and there's a 9 millimeter floating around. Well, he shot the belly crawling around. No way that happened. So how did your brother get shot? Just to push the pin, so they right? Had a machete and just stepped it on the wall. I said, Come on, get out. Pull it down. Okay. Just cut it. You cut your brother? Yeah. Okay. With a machete? Yeah. Where did you cut him? He was just like that. So, cut his hands. Cut his hand. How many times did you cut him? <sighs> what did he say? He said, He just cussed at me. He did. What did he say, though? You can speak freely here. What did he say? He said, like, you, okay? Oh, you asshole bitch. He just kept saying that. Yeah. So you're tracking right, because we went from your dad was dragging all this stuff around, and then you just threw the machete at him. He saved yourself, which was a total crap story, and we admitted that. So we're now we're getting to the truth of what happened. The detective moves into the confession position here. It's important to know that as humans, we naturally mirror body language when we're engaged in conversation with others, and our body language can affect our openness and mood. This officer is taking advantage of this by modeling the confession pose in an attempt to get Eldon to join him in the pose that is most likely to elicit honesty and a confession. I 
again. You hear me? Okay. I shine. Okay. Strong. Three more times. I hit. Okay. Was that all one right after the other? Shot him in the belly three times in the head right after each other? Is that how that worked? Um, well, did he crawl up the hallway like you said earlier? It sounds like that to me. He did crawl up the hallway. Yeah, after I shot him once, he, he went in John's room. So you're still saying that your dad crawled up the hallway? Yeah. Okay. He gets into your brother's room? And then what? Moved the cushions off the bed, the mattresses. And uh, called me down. Called your brother? Yeah, he said, you know, so it's not bad. I just hit him. With the machete? Yeah. In the where? Like in the hips. Like here, like here, yeah. on the edge out here, not down here. Point to it on yourself. Where's it? Where's it cut out? Cut like. All around it. How many times did you swing the machete at him? A lot. How many is a lot? It's a lot. Mm, ballpark. More than 50? Not 50, 30. 30 times? Yeah. Okay. Did you hit him anywhere else other than here? His legs, probably. Hit him in his legs? Anywhere else? Head? Head. Head. You did hit him in the head? Yeah. Where at in the head? The back. Back of his head? Yeah. What else did you do? That was it. Then I called the police. We're getting close. We're getting close. Did you shoot your brother? Shotgun. You shot him with the shotgun? The leg. Okay. Where else? I think I missed. Other shots. Where do you think you hit him? Or where did you try? I tried to hit him. Hit him. Hit him where? Wherever it's hit him. Where do you think, what were you aiming at? I was aiming at him. Where on him? He, him, he's a... He was under the bed. Okay, so where were you aiming at? Aiming under the bed. Just, so a blind shot, you didn't see him, you just knew where he was and he shot? Well, I tried to see. Okay, so what were you looking at? I was looking at him and I just saw his leg and... What about the 45? 45. Did you shoot him with that at all? Uh, Be honest. I got people down at the crime scene right now, Elder. And so we're asking you this question. To think. You cannot leave anything out. I shot him once. Well, <clears throat> Elden, this is where I'm at with this. Um, Elden's toes are tightly curled under and crossed. Once again, he rubs at his neck in a position that's automatically calming to the heart. I think you told us quite a bit, but I think that you've left a lot of stuff out, okay? Likely, without meaning to, Eldon nodded when the officer says he left a lot of stuff out. I think you told us quite a bit, but I think that you've left a lot of stuff out, okay? And so, you know, if there's any BS that you finished just a little bit ago, clear it up when we come back in. Okay, so give us a few minutes, and then we'll come back in, let you use the restroom, and we'll talk again, okay? Just sit tight, all right, Tom? Okay. Can I get some shoes? Just hang on. Eldon has finally come clean about hurting his brother, but the question remains, will he give detectives the whole story? So, <clears throat> you are pissed at your dad because he puts sands on you. What? You're pissed at your dad because he puts his hands on you. Punch it here, I hit you. That's self defense right there. No, but when your dad does it to you, how do you feel about it? I felt like scared. Like he's gonna kill me. Okay. From pushing you? Yeah. Eldon does a quick lip compression when he mentions self defense. He's verbalizing what he's been trying to relay to detectives, which is that he supposedly shot his father in self defense. However, we later learn that Eldon's understanding is limited when it comes to what truly constitutes acting in self-defense. He slipped into the detective's modeled confession pose posture as well, though not as far down. 
Did he have Did he have a gun in his hand at that point? I didn't know if he had a millimeter on him. But you have already have the forty five at this point, right? Yeah, I can find the nine millimeter. How did you get the gun from your dad? I just, it was on the ground. He dropped it on the couch. No, no, under the couch where he keeps it. I just took it, this like clip out, took out the bullet, and put it back. And then dad pushes you. He just pushed me. Okay. And then do you say anything to him after that? Like anything? I said stop. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, and then he does it again. I just But I, I'm asking you first, you he pushed you a second time. Yeah. Okay. What did it seem like dad was trying to do by pushing you? He's just pushing me harder. Okay. Was he trying to get you to sit down? Was he trying to he was just pushing me to push me somewhere? Okay. Well, but what did he say? He didn't say anything, he just said, he was just pushing me. And he didn't say any words. He just, I just told him to stop. By steepling his hands, the detective is attempting to convey a sense of confidence and leadership in this situation. He's taken the lead in questioning and is reflecting that with his nonverbal cues. He's also spread his elbows out and is taking up a lot of space, another sign of confidence. So he pushes you, he tells him to stop, he pushes you again, and you shoot. Okay. And that's when you hit him in the belly. Dad basically crawls from the area of your bedroom. Are you in your bedroom at this point? Yeah. Okay. And is Dad kind of backing you into your bedroom? No, I'm like trying to get out. Oh, you're trying to get out of your bedroom. And he's trying to keep you in your bedroom. No, I just get out. I'm just crawling out in front of the couch. Saying weird stuff that like, I couldn't even understand. What was he saying? I don't know. He was, he was like blabbering, you know. I didn't know what he was saying. He's on his medication. And he just got shot in the belly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That might put somebody in a little bit of shock, don't you think? Yeah. Okay, so he crawls, he's creating a little blood drop trail, and he's going to your brother's room. And so, does he make it into your brother's room? Okay, and then, how is he seated? What's he doing? Is he laying down? Is he sitting up? What? He's sitting up. Sitting up on his butt? Yeah. Propped up against something? Yeah. What? I don't know. The desk that John has? The desk that John has? Yeah. And is Dad saying anything to you at this point? No. Okay. And then, as he's propped up, then you... At that point, is that when you take two more shots and you hit him in the face? But you don't think that that did the job? No, because it didn't hit the brain. Okay, so then you took one more shot up higher to hit the brain. Yeah. Okay. And you knew that he probably wasn't dead or might not die because of what you, the three shots prior, but you thought this shot would yeah. cause him to die? I understand that it's traumatic and things like that, but at the same time, I don't believe a young man like yourself, seem like a pretty smart kid, doesn't know what happened. So I need you to be 100% honest with me, because I have detectives down at the scene that are telling me what they see and what they believe has happened or has happened. And so I need you to be 100% honest with me about that. Because some of the stuff you're saying is contradictory to what the evidence is telling us. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. Usually, the evidence doesn't lie. Okay? Usually. Usually. And I say that because sometimes it happens. But in this case, I, I don't think that it is. It's not too hard to understand what happened. Fair enough? But what we're missing is exactly all the details of what happened. And we're missing... Uh, basically, why it happened, the real why, uh, and things like that. So, with that being said, did you shoot your brother? Well, by saying with what, Eldon avoids having to say no or yes. He's trying to find out what information the detectives have already first before he admits to anything. You tell me I wasn't there. It's a simple question. Which gun? 
I don't know. I wasn't there, Elgin. That's, dude, that's not the question. I guess. Okay. So, what gun did you shoot him with? I think with the shotgun. I know what shotgun looks like. And a few times? Yeah. Okay. A few to me is three. Okay. So, how many times did you shoot him? Well, I had a shotgun wound two at a time. Then, start like trying to get him under the bed. So, how many times do you think he hit him with a shotgun? Uh, and where? The legs. Five times. He hit him with the legs five times. He eat five shots to the legs. I don't know. I wasn't that. Okay. So, then what happens? Hold the mattresses over. Then, he's just starting saying the F was to me and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you used the machete on him yet? Yeah. You had already cut him with the machete? After. After the shotgun? Yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm getting at. So the first thing you did to him was shoot him with the shotgun? Yeah. Okay. And then the machete came later? Yeah. Can you stand up for me and show me how you swung at him? And don't do it to either one of us. Maybe face that wall yeah. and then show us what you did. I was like on the couch, the, the, the mattress cushion, and I was he had his head like that, and I just... What did you say when you were doing it? didn't say anything. Okay. Was he saying anything? No. Okay. Was... Okay, now you're doing that. Now I want you to do it how hard you did it to him. Hmm? I want you to show me how hard you were swinging the machete. Like that. Okay, so just a second ago you were one hand. Yeah. Okay? Now you just did two hands. Yeah. So which is it? I don't know. It was a two-handed machete. It had like a little shield on it. Okay. So, so it's to one hand over the other? Yeah. Okay. And, but I guess what I'm saying to you is I want to see how hard you did that. Just demonstrate for me how hard you swung that machete. Yes. Was it hard? As hard as I could. As hard as you could. Perfect. That's what I wanted to know. Once he's outside of the bed and you hit him in the back of the head, where else do you hit him after that? Nowhere else. That was it. Was, was he dead? I don't think. Was he moving? Well... When I was hitting him for a shade. Was he moving because you were hitting him, or was he moving on his own? He was moving. Okay. Was he saying anything? No. I thought he was f bombing you. f bombing? Yeah. You know the expression. You said that. Those are your words, not mine. He was being quiet after that. After you hit him in the head? Yeah. And then I called the police. <clears throat> now that they're making headway on how Junior and Jonathan were killed, it's time to ask the most important question. Why'd you do it? My brother. He was the reason why my dad was taking the medication. Because he used to make everybody mad. In the stores. I started really hating him. It seems that Eldon may have wanted to eliminate what he perceived as the root of the family's problems. From Eldon's perspective, his father may have been the most severe issue in the household because of his alleged of the boys and of Eldon's mother. Eldon is, after all, a child, so his thinking and way of processing the dysfunction in the family come from the perspective of a young teen who may have been abused and neglected. It's very possible that his father may have blamed his issues on the kids, which is typical of abusive and neglectful parents. Eldon may have believed this, which could explain his anger toward his brother. It's important to keep in mind that in the teen years, the brains of adolescents are still developing, particularly the frontal lobe, which means that they may act impulsively or may act on intense emotions or issues at home without fully considering or fully understanding the true dynamics of the issues. It's important to consider the role of how teenagers think and process information because, at this age, it's typical for kids to fantasize about escaping situations they don't like. In Eldon's case, it was much more than just something he doesn't like. This may have led him to resort to such extreme measures. 
How long have you been hating him? Years? Yeah, how many years? A lot of years. You're 14. Nine years? You've been hating him five. Five, five years? Okay. My mom couldn't handle the stress. She was more so. She ran away. Have you ever thought about hurting your brother before? Yeah. Yeah? How would you have done that? Probably a long time ago. What? About six. What? I just stabbed him in the back. You stabbed your brother in the back? Yeah. And you get caught? I don't think so. It was like six years old. You stabbed your brother in the back with what? Hmm? What's what? A knife. Like a kitchen knife. Like a kitchen knife? Did he bleed? I don't know. I don't remember. I think he did bleed. How many times did you stab him? Just once. You get in trouble? You didn't get in trouble. You stabbed your brother in the back. Did your dad know about it? I think so. So where does this anger come from? Him. Your brother? Where did anger come from your dad? He didn't. You didn't have anger towards your dad? Well, I find that hard to believe when you just shot your dad four times. So where's your anger come from your dad? He used to beat me. Okay, and I've heard you say that, but you haven't really explained that. What do you mean he used to beat you? Just beat me. I loved him. But that time that he came after me. You had decided that you were going to do something about it? Yeah. What did you decide you were going to do? Shoot him. That's what you told yourself. Next time he came at you, you were going to shoot him. Yeah. When did you first think that? Just right at that point. When was that, though? Last night. This night? This night? Yeah. So, so tell me tell me about the times that your dad has beat you in the past. You, you, I think you said between the last time and tonight it had been about eight months. Is that, is that still accurate? Yeah. Okay, and then prior to the eight months, how many times has your dad, as you say, beat you? Like, he used to take his pills like once a month and started acting crazy. I called the police last time when he tried to drive the truck under the influence. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of that report. Yeah. Eldon avoids the question here and instead starts telling a story about one specific instance. So what happened to him? I tried to stop him. What happened to him? Went to the uh, hospital. Hospital or jail? Hospital. Hospital? Did they keep him overnight? Yeah. They usually do. What did you say when he got out? What did you mean? What did you say to your dad? My dad? Yeah, what did you say to him? I didn't say anything. You didn't tell him you were pissed at him or you loved him or you hated him? What did you say? I thought he'd be mad at me. Because... You call the police on Okay. Eldon admits to harboring a lifelong hatred for his brother, who was severely autistic and required a lot of their father's attention. But had Eldon been planning to kill his family all along, or did he simply snap? So where do we leave off? We left off with um, what happened with your brother, okay? And then we were talking a little bit about that... Seems to me, and don't, and don't let me put words in your mouth, that you're a little, <coughs> excuse me, angry with your brother. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And you said it's been going on quite some time. Yeah. And, um, and you, I, I think you said that part of your anger is, is that, you know, not only does he upset you, he upsets your dad, he upsets your mom. Yeah. Who else is he upset? Everybody. Who's everybody? I don't know. He's just upset at people that in stores he pulled people's fingers. So mm -hmm. was tonight what you were gonna do about it? Yeah. So how long have you been thinking about hurting your brother? A while. How long is a while? Um, Can you tell me what kind of thoughts you had when you when you think about hurting your brother? Just didn't want to. So I'm hearing. Okay. 
So what were your ideas on how to make that happen? This get killed or something. Huh? Just get killed or something. Get him killed or something? So in in your thoughts, the way that this needed to end was your brother to die. My mother would have left. But that's for my dad. Because my dad treated her like dead. I was dead my whole life. I'm sure you were. What makes you really mad? The most mad thing that Jonathan did, what what was it? Like, if I like stabbed my dad, bought a candy bar for John, and I told him not to eat it, and I walked back and eat it. Oh, my God, to me. And why would you tell him not to eat it? Because I want to eat it. All oh, right. And he would just buy one for Jonathan? Why wouldn't he buy one for you? Oh, well, he did. So you wanted both? Yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's honest. Do you think that's fair? For me? All right, for you. That's fair. That's a good statement. Well, hey, why for you is that fair? Okay, for me. Yeah. Well, it's, but not for him. And then if he said, if he if he didn't do what he said, you'd be pissed at him? I would be pissed. Yeah. How pissed? Pissed. Real pissed? You ever fought with your brother before? No. And throw and stuff at him. You he throw stuff at him? It's annoying stuff he brings back from school, like it's clap hand stuff, he break that stuff. Throw it at him. It's him say, Don't bring it yet. Why do you want your dad to die? Well, I don't want him to be killing me. Eldon's intense eye rubbing is a continued form of eye blocking. Okay, so you're saying that you killed him so he wouldn't kill you? He's gonna kill me all those times. Almost what time was that? All the different times. Okay, and we've talked about that a little bit, but other than pushing and stuff like that, you haven't told me anything that would lead me to believe that your dad was going to kill you. So what am I missing? What time are you? Where did you get that was shot. So... When you were walking and he was crawling to the brother's room and you saw him and he was propped up, were you thinking, you know how we talked about it? I talked about, hey, we have these voices inside that say, well, I'm not going to let that happen again. I can do that. Did you go in there and said, I can you save yourself. I'm going to kill him. Or did you think that? What? What did you think when you were walking to your brother's bedroom with the gun in your hand? He's a bad person. Okay. What else? I know that's not it. Yeah, but I just knew if he was, if he was going to live, he's going to come after me. That's what you thought? Yeah. It's hard to tell, but Eldon may be crying or attempting to look like he's crying. His statements about getting mad at his brother for not handing over his candy bar clearly show he's quite the self-absorbed young person. So if there's tears, they're likely because he's realized he's not going to be walking away from this at this point. So you, you, did you walk in there knowing that you had to kill your dad? Yeah. That was your only option? Yeah. Is what, it, and I'm just trying to understand what you're thinking. I'm not saying that's what I'm asking. Was your only thought that your dad needed to die so he didn't come back and hurt you? Yeah. Is that fair? Anybody else? Okay, is that, what I'm saying, is that accurate? Yeah. Okay. So I don't want to put words in your mouth, okay? I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want to make sure these are your words. If you live, you live. You live. You live. You live. Okay. The grandparents. So what did you do because of that? Maybe. Because he, he would either hurt you, your mother, your grandparents. What did you do so he couldn't do that? Shot in the head. Okay. Tim, did you do that with the intention on killing him? Yeah. Okay. Why, if your issue was with your dad that night, which it seemed like it started there, why kill your brother? Just because of everything else that you told me? Yeah. It seemed like he cared for John more than anybody. Your dad did? Yeah. Okay. And so tell me about that. Did that upset you? Yeah. Because John was like, like, best one of the house. Your perspective 
John's best one in the house, that's your perspective from how, what dad treated you versus him. So how many times in the last month have you thought about killing your daddy's brother? Just that night. Just what night? This night. This night? So you never thought about it prior to this? Now, earlier you told me that you had. What? You said it. You said it. And we could play the tape back, but you said if he did it again, and I was thinking if he did it again, and punched me again, or pushed me again, that I would kill him. Yeah, but I didn't. That was continuing on. I just couldn't do it. So that's, the, that's why he's asking that question. I was like, I just couldn't do this. And then that one night, I did it. Tonight. Okay. So, but you've thought about it. Have you ever acted on it? Like, got the gun ready? No. Or were ready to do it and you just couldn't bring yourself to do it? I just couldn't bring myself to do it. But I, I guess that's what I'm asking. Did you ever prepare yourself to do it and you just couldn't do it? No. I think you, it was your words that you said, man, I hate my brother. You said that. Yeah. Is that accurate? You hate your brother? Yeah. You hate your brother enough to kill him? No. Well, yeah. You do? Yeah. Okay. And is that why you did it tonight? It's not just that. What else? He was part of the reason why I did that. If he wasn't here all these times, my dad would be taking medication. My mom would have left. It would have been a happy family. Okay. So, so you blame your brother for your family not being together? Yes. Okay. And you blame your dad a little bit for that same thing, if I heard you right. Yeah. Because of how he treated your mom. Is that accurate? So, is it fair to say because of those reasons that you have some serious anger toward both of them? Not anymore. No, towards your dad and brother. I hate my brother daughter. You hated your brother more? Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't sound like you were all that fond of dad either. Yeah. Well, I'm asking. Yeah. Again, this is me asking you a question. It's self-defense. What was self-defense? Death. Why? He pushed me. He's the second time I shot him. Okay. Why do, you, why do you think a push by your dad? Because he's done it before. Okay. I, I guess I'm just trying to wrap my mind around it, and I'm asking. I'm not, you know, not trying to hurt your feelings or anything like that, but I'm asking. Why would your dad pushing you cause you to shoot him? I feel like he was stricken. Because he pushed you? Yeah. You know how many times my dad pushed me when I was a kid? Yeah, but he pushed me like, like hit me. The officer is a little out of line here. Just because your dad pushed you around as a kid, which wasn't okay, it doesn't excuse any dad pushing their kid around. It's not clear exactly what he's trying to do here, as this question has been asked and answered the same multiple times now. So, kind of pushed you, hit you in that chest area. Okay. Okay. Do you ever have a kid at school punch you? If not, like, it's in California, you ever have a kid at school punch you? Uh, California? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You ever feel like you needed to shoot him? No, I just feel like I need to punch him back. Okay. What if I punch you in the chest? Like right now? Yeah. I'm not going to do it, so I'm not trying to get you worked up, but what if I did that? Would you feel like you need to shoot, your, shoot me to defend yourself? If I punched him? I'd punch your back. Fair enough. So why didn't you just punch your dad back? I did that before. Or time. So why not tonight? 
So I'm just trying to understand, you know, Eldon, why it went to the point now that we are sitting here with you and your dad and your brother are dead. Does that bother you? It doesn't bother you that they're dead? Because why? Because because why? Yeah. Can can you can you try and explain that to me a little bit? Because that's that's a pretty bold statement that you don't you don't care that they're dead. Eldon claims to have no remorse for what he did. It seems that his anger supersedes any other emotion he might have, at least here during the interrogation. This is an indication of the extent of the anger that Eldon has harbored against his father and brother. It's so strong and so deep that even after all is said and done, after the adrenaline rush of the situation has subsided and his father and brother are being referred to in the past tense, he's claiming not to feel any sadness or emotion for them. It's also an indication of how troubled Eldon is. When asked, Natasha, Eldon's half-sister, said that Eldon didn't have a chance in reference to his childhood. It's possible that he may feel relief now, even though Eldon knows he's likely to face consequences for what he did. So what are you crying about? Are you crying because you got caught? You mean, or are you upset? When the police came, why are, why are you upset? Why are you crying? And, and sometimes it's difficult for you to talk about us if you don't care if they're dead. I don't. Do you know? If you don't know, you don't know. I don't. All right. But you're not upset over them being dead. You kind of feel bad for your dad. You kind of feel bad for your dad, but not at all for your brother. Yeah. How long, well, I, I remember you saying that you only thought about this tonight. You know, that's a pretty calculated thing. So, I just knew I, I have to do it tonight. Why? Why tonight? I couldn't wait any longer. Hmm? I couldn't wait any longer. Okay, so how long did you wait? I thought about it. Like, what did you three be at me? Eight months ago? Yeah, like that. After he beats me, he takes away all my stuff. I just lay in my bed. So I probably think about doing it, and I couldn't do it, so I stopped. Stop thinking about it? Yeah. So between the last time he beat you and tonight, how many times have you thought about it? I just stopped. Stopped thinking about it. Just did it. Well, well, we know you did it, but how many times did you think about it? That's the question. I thought about it every time you beat me. I guess that's my point, because if I'm understanding your, your story, the last time he beat you was eight months ago. And then tonight this happened. So in between those times, how many times did you think about doing what you did tonight? I don't know. I did it that night. Okay. Have you, do you recall ever thinking about it during that time frame? I can imagine it. Okay. What have you imagined doing? Nothing. Show them. And it all. And this is your dad. What, what, have, what have you thought about your brother? It's just my dad. Okay, so you never, you never dreamt about it, thought about it, about killing your brother, even though you hate him and he's the cause of the, re you know, that your family's not whole. Yeah. But you've never thought about killing him until the night. Yeah. But you have had thoughts about killing your dad in the past. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, I think I'm understanding your story a little better. I think we're there. I just, the only thing that kind of I'm hung up on is the fact that how much you hate your brother, at least that's what you relayed to us, and that this is the first time you ever thought about hurting him. Yeah. So I just don't know if I'm buying that part. I'm not. And if you're leaving it out, if you're going out, you know, the times that you thought about killing your brother. I mean, I, 
thought about, but I didn't know I was going to do it. That's what I'm asking. I was just thinking, what would life be like if he died? Eldon goes back and forth as to whether or not he planned to kill his brother or made prior attempts. But he still hasn't told the detectives everything and is about to reveal another final layer to his depravity. One thing I didn't know, maybe it was just like I said, I'm over my ears. There's that shotgun. Where's the shotgun right now? Bruno? I know you know. Come on. Where is it? Bruno? So you knew where it was in your room where it was leaning up. You knew how many shells you put in it. You knew how you stuck it under the bed because you demonstrated that. So let's say I'm just going in the house, lights are off, and I got a flashlight. Where am I going to find it? Flashlight? Yeah. Where'd you stash it, dude? That's right. The shotgun shot. I don't know. Yes, you do. You do now. I forgot. I I think I just left it there in the bed. In that room? Yeah. Where your brother and yeah. dad are dead? Okay. Where's the 45? It's on the counter. The counter in the kitchen? Yeah. Okay. And then you don't know where the 9 millimeter is. Oh, and okay. that never came out. You never saw it. Works on it. Okay. It's probably in the room. Where's the machete? The other knife, the, the dagger knife, the other knife? What? There's one other knife. Where's that? We talked about it earlier. The knife? Yeah. The black knife? Sure. Whatever knife he was there. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Where is it? I left it there, I think. What'd you do with it, though? Oh, no, I just stopped what it was doing me. With the knife, not the machete, the knife. I know. Okay, what were you doing with the knife? I am stabbing him. Stabbing who? John. Okay, with the, the knife, not the machete. Okay, so, see, that's a new twist to this. You never told us that. I forgot. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Go ahead, sir. How many times did you stab him? Fifteen, fourteen times. Okay, so let me make sure I got this right. You used the machete on him first, correct? Yeah. Okay. And then you hit him approximately 30 times with that, kind of. We discussed it all over the body for the most part. Arms, legs, uh, head, probably nothing to the torso, it doesn't sound like. Anything to the back? I think so. Okay. What the officer is describing here is overkill and shows the serious levels of rage Eldon has towards his brother. The interrogators are now going much faster with Eldon, not leaving any empty space for him to answer and basically just feeding him a narrative. They're no longer asking open questions and being quiet for a moment to let him answer on his own. This may be a change in strategy because they don't want to give him too long to think and formulate another lie. It's also possible that they're shocked at his responses and a bit emotional themselves, which would be completely understandable. It's a lot of anger. Any other weapons that we haven't talked about that you used? That I used? That you used tonight. There's other weapons, but they weren't used. What do you think should happen to Keith? Me? Yeah, if you were, uh, and you were talking to me, what should happen? Normally, interrogators pose this question, the punishment question, earlier on in the discussion, not after the suspect has admitted to the crime. This may be an attempt to gauge his understanding of right and wrong, or to see if he feels any remorse whatsoever. If he still said a warning or going to live with his mom or counseling, or any kind of soft answer, then it really would point to him having a remorseless frame of mind. I'm gonna go back to California. What about the legal stuff? What should happen? Jail? Warning? What? Come on. You're smart. You're smart, guy. Give us a give us a gift. Yes. Yeah. What would you do? What should happen to someone that just killed their brother or their father? Die. Do you think a person should die? Yeah. Why? Because I probably deserve it. Do you think you deserve that? Yeah. You think you deserve to die because you killed your brother, your dad? Yeah. Okay. This is an unexpected answer, particularly since Eldon initially stated that he should go back to California with his mom. 
He goes from basically saying he should be set free to then referring to the death penalty. It's very likely that Eldon felt trapped and hopeless, living in an abusive situation with two people that he grew to despise. It's important to keep in mind that abuse alone typically doesn't result in a teenager killing his father and brother. There typically have to be serious behavioral issues present and early antisocial traits. All right, man. I think we're done. But let us step out and talk for a few minutes, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do with you next, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, go. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'll, as soon as they come back in, I'll tell you. Okay? Once we figure all that out. Okay. Put your hands behind your back for this officer here, okay? Turn around face the wall. Okay? You're under arrest for first degree murder times two. Okay. After a preliminary hearing, Eldon's first-degree murder charge for his father dropped down to second-degree after the judge didn't feel there was sufficient evidence to prove premeditation. However, the first-degree charge stuck for the murder of Jonathan. Eldon was tried as an adult in 2016, and though the detectives had a hard time getting him to land on an exact timeline, the prosecution laid it out for the jury to show just how much damage Eldon had done. Junior was shot in the stomach after allegedly pushing Eldon twice. Junior crawled to his youngest son's room and propped himself up against the nightstand, where Eldon shot him three more times in the head with a 45 caliber handgun. After an unsuccessful attempt to coax Jonathan out from under the bed, Eldon shoved the 45 underneath and shot at his brother several times. He then opted instead for a shotgun, loaded it, and shot Jonathan again multiple times. After removing the mattress and box spring, Eldon then grabbed a knife and began to stab his brother. Jonathan tried to crawl out from under the bed towards his father when Eldon grabbed his final weapon, the machete, and hacked at his brother's arms, legs, and head until he stopped moving. The prosecution described Eldon's actions as prolonged and purposeful. The fact that he used multiple weapons against his helpless brother showed that the killing was deliberate and premeditated. The defense tried to argue that Junior had given Eldon some of his medications, which had altered his brain. They told the jury that Eldon merely snapped after years of neglect, but never planned to murder his family before that moment. In addition, the defense used what was referred to as the zombie defense, in which Junior prepped for the apocalypse to show just how unstable Junior was leading up to and at the time of the attack, which the prosecution fully rejected calling the claim ridiculous. In the end, 14-year-old Eldon was found guilty of the second-degree murder of his father, Eldon Samuel II, and guilty of the first-degree murder of his younger brother, Jonathan Samuel. He was sentenced to 20 years fixed, with five years indeterminate for the murder of his brother, and 10 years fixed with five years indeterminate for the murder of his father, which are being served concurrently in an adult prison. Eldon is due to be released in March of 2029. Fucking knows. Nobody knows. And when you got somebody like me, a neutral party, a journalist asking questions, everyone gets upset. In the evening. The fact that he pre-planned this, uh, to me, it feels like something that was already planned. But the way all this guy is talking is like, he barely could get his story straight. I'm telling you, this is the type of person, if he had the internet, he would be like the biggest fucking troll. Or the biggest asshole who would be probably reposting like, the 9-11 clips going on fortune or going on vine at that time reposting them and mocking people who died at that um in particular timeline you guys gotta understand that that in particular timeline was for people who were just going to be ruthless 2014 was just the worst hour for those who did not fit in at the time right what does this have to do with this relevant case the fact that this guy is a neurotypical and you guys would think he wouldn't have been autistic, right? 
y'all wouldn't have been thinking that uh this Elgin the third would be autistic, but I don't believe that. He was neurotypical than a motherfucker because here's the thing, neurotypical is playing. They think about it twice over. And one thing I noticed about it is that he kept saying he was thinking about it, but he didn't want to go through with it. And basically because his autistic brother was so irritating because of, you know, something he can't control. It made perfect sense of what he really wanted to do. Which is fucked up. You know, when someone like that has guns, weapons, and is talking about the apocalypse, you have to really understand that's where things get worse from here. The motherfucker already had guns. The fact that the dad was that really careless to not understand that his son is capable of even thinking about killing is the bigger problem here. This dude thought it would be okay to murder his own son because of the simple fact that his son would do little, I mean, his own little brother, because he would do little things like take candy bars that he couldn't help, but yet you want to murder him. Okay. And then your dad was apparently abusing you. All right. See, the thing is about neurotypicals, they more likely want to make excuses for their actions, especially against an autistic person. If you think about it, he stabbed him 14 times, or at least from what they say is 15 times, then a machete hacking away at his little brother's arms. Now, let me tell you guys something. That's some real neurotypical hate right there. I don't care what you say. That is some real neurotypical hate right there. To be hacking away at a severely autistic person. Just so you can just keep doing it over and over and over again. To me, I don't think it was rage. That was fun to him. I'm going to say it straight up. That was fun to him. He was taking all of his sweet time. He just wanted to blow the brains out of the dad. And just keep doing it. He blew the, the brains out of the dad because why should I let him live? I mean, he's like me, but, you know, I hate him as well. So I might as well just give him the safe passage of going up to the next world. That's what he did. But his little brother... He had to stay alive for all of it. See, that's the thing. You guys gotta remember, someone like this, all y'all nice guy gamers wouldn't have been definitely friends with and wouldn't think twice about either. Someone that's fucked up in the head like him, yeah, no. And on top of that, apparently, they would be caught outside smoking little cigarettes and staring at people. Yeah, no. Guys, let's remember something. If there's an individual like this, I feel the need to premeditate, even though they say it's not premeditate, to be thinking about constantly killing someone. Even the slight thought of it should be an instantaneous red flag regardless. It should not be taken and underestimated like it is something that just should be passed by. See, the thing is, the word satire have ruined anything to do with the word killing. Because you hear someone saying things for satire purposes. How are you supposed to play it? Hmm? You won't. You can't do it. But the only thing you can do to stop this is to be bold enough to kind of put a secret little report towards the police just so it's in there, just in case if anything goes down. They're probably not going to give a damn, but just do it because why not? And 
even if they don't, they're in trouble too. So, I mean, is it really worth it? Well, guys, I'm gonna leave you there. This video honestly upset at me because it's just, just pure evil, to, just pure evil to me. Okay, I'm gonna say that straight up. It's very pure evil to me. The fact that you target someone with a disability that's severely autistic, knowing damn well they have no way to fight against you. That, that's a special type of neurotypical evil. That's a special type of neurotypical evil, man. You can't get away from someone like that. I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hi, I'm Lucy Christian. I am the voice of Otako Urabanka, and you should subscribe to News Sanity's channel.